God's raising up a generation of Davids. Now watch this. When, when the prophet comes down to anoint a king, he's got to find a king that has understood who God is. Everybody say, who God is. In other words, he had a full revelation of God. He didn't have a knowledge about God. He knew God. You know how he knew God? Because he had been perfecting his private worship. He had been walking with God when the bears were attacking the sheep. He had been walking with God when the lions were attacking the sheep. In other words, he did not disdain his minute menial calling as a shepherd boy, but he took that responsibility as seriously as he would take being the king over the nation of Israel. And until you can learn to be faithful because you understand that whatever season you're in is a season where you're developing your relationship with God and not your ministry. Two words. Two words that, that I believe have the power to transform your life, transform your health, transform your happiness, transform your success, transform your relationship with other people and your walk with God. And they're really, they're just two real simple words. The words, thank you. And I want to tell you here today that there is power in gratitude. When the alarm clock rings tomorrow morning, what's your attitude? God is going to raise a generation of people that are in pursuit of Him instead of being in pursuit of ministry. Listen from the guy that was that guy. I lived most of my life pursuing ministry. I live my life now pursuing the face of God. And you can pursue ministry and achieve a lot of things, but you will never be what God created you to be until you go after God and quit chasing ministry. As long as you're hungry for ministry, you are not ready for ministry. As long as you're looking for a position and it's not coming fast enough, you're not ready. If you're offended every time you're overlooked or left out or somebody don't recognize you, you are not a David generation. You are a Saul generation. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. Say that with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be made glad in it. Rejoicing is something that you do because you choose to. It has nothing to do with your circumstance. It has nothing to do with the details of your situation. It has everything to do with your attitude. And that's determined by the amount of gratitude you have. Tomorrow when you get in your car and you drive to work, as you're fighting through traffic to get to the office, are you going to thank God for the job that you have? If you're crushed emotionally and it takes you weeks to get over somebody not mentioning your name or somebody not recognizing you or not getting picked for an assignment, it comes out of your lack of revelation. It doesn't come out of the deserve the feeling to be offended. It comes because you don't have a revelation of who he is yet. Because when you have a revelation of who God is, you can be overlooked because you understand and know something. My God is faithful. And if God has shown me something, then I can be content tending the sheep even when people don't recognize the anointing and gifting on my life. Because after all, I'm not doing it to be something. I'm just doing it to honor God. Everything starts to work out. Today, look around. Surely there are small blessings, little joys, tiny hints of God's favor for which you can be grateful. Don't take things for granted today. Take them with gratitude. A grateful heart is the treasure of God. What's the only thing you can give him that he didn't already have?